Hi folks, Paul here, ready for part two, assembling my do-it-yourself 12 volt car battery using old um, pouch cells out of some e-bikes that I got. These are Lifey Po, so the nominal voltage is 3.2 volts, which means when I string four groups in series I'll get a nominal voltage of 12.8 volts which is absolutely perfect for the existing charging infrastructure inside the car. So I've typed in all the capacities from the 40 cells uh, into a spreadsheet and if I copy that and go over to repacker.com I can paste those into there and those cells I want four groups in series ten cells each in parallel the nominal voltage of these is 3.2 volts I want fixed sized groups so let's generate that pack and switch to compact view my favorite uh, so we've got 48 amp hours, 614 watt hours, which is quite nice. Um, and then we've got all these groups that I need to sort everything into. And, and copy the clipboard. What I like to do is feed these into my own back into my own spreadsheet that looks like that so that is um, the milliamp hour spread between each group which is bugger all that's good and uh, we're looking good and this is a histogram of 100 milliamp hour segments and in the perfect world, all of the cells would be in one uh, segment, in one bucket. But um, this is going to be okay. It's a 500 milliamp hour spread, which is a reasonable spread. But that's for um, from 4,500 up to 5,000. Uh, I think that's going to be okay. Um, given that I'm balancing them with Repacker, I think it will be good. Um, for those who've never used Repacker, uh, I always use it for uh, packs that I'm building that have groups of less than 20 cells. Um, if you're building a power wall with packs that have a group that has like 80 cells in it, you don't need to use repacker it's not going to help you at all um or how it's not going to help you enough to justify the, the time but for something like this where it is only 10 cells in parallel in each group um i think repack is, is really useful right uh 25 27 oh so these are in numerical order and there's a 27 there 25. If we go that one there, goes that one there. Oh, I see. 39 goes there. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Oh, so Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes. All right.
Right. So, minus plus, minus plus, minus plus, minus plus. Good. Good. Um, yeah. I wonder if it's worth having an insulator between these, between these. Yes. That's definitely. Yes. Right. I'm going to use some of this FR4 that came out of the old e-bike batteries as spaces between the um, terminals that need to be kept separate. So this is negative plus plus uh, negative plus negative plus. So those need to be kept separate. So I've cut a couple of those and I'll do one more. Okay. So it'll go on that way, this one this way, that one that way, and this is like that. Good. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. The plan is to use these bus bars on there, on there, and, and so on, and then solder those to the tabs. Now these particular wires are not thin enough to be considered fuses, they're more just an easy way of attaching to the tabs. Although I suspect that if a individual cell were to short circuit then this would probably burn through. Uh, so it's almost fuse like but not quite. Um, my main concern is that if I had a really um, fine fuse, it would vibrate um, and break. So I'm hoping that this will not do that. But um, I don't really know until I test it, run it for a year and see if it works. I can see now I should have used some of the thicker threaded wire rather than this really fine stuff uh, because the solder wicks into the um, into the fine threads and it doesn't bunch up nearly as well. Uh, so I think that problem would not have occurred if I'd used more of this. Oh well. Uh, next time.
Okay, here's the first bus bar soldered in, and it's kind of okay. Um, I'm hoping the next ones will be a little bit tidier than that, but I think I know what I need to do now. So, onwards. Ideally, I should have used flux on these tabs before pre-soldering them, but I've managed to lose both of my flux pins somewhere in the mess. Uh, so I'm just slathering it in um, solder, which has a, um, a flux inside it. Um, yeah, it's a bit messier, but such is life. I can't be bothered going to the shop and getting my another flux pen. That looks adequate. <laughs> uh, given that they're all second-hand cells and the tabs have already been mangled once, that's not too bad. So, just two more to go. Now, just to reduce the chance of me short-circuiting something, Lock that on while I'm working. All right, it's all wired up. Let's just quickly test the voltage. There and there. 12.95 volts. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. That's good. Uh, so then that will go there, that will go there, that will slide on, slide into the battery box. That's good. Uh, that will go there. The BMS will screw on there, and the positive will screw on there, and go. those will both poke up through there. So next I need to uh, wire up the balance leads, and I'm going to do two balance leads, one that will be plugged into the BMS all the time and then a spare second set of balance leads that I can plug a um, monitor into. Um, probably this um, volt log. This old volt log that I've got. Uh, just so that I can uh, 
test, keep an eye on things when I'm um, doing the initial testing. Alright, next up, balance leads. Alright, I think we're ready to assemble. That's done. So if we're lucky, this should work. We should get so that twelve volts on that. And we should get twelve volts on that. Yes, we do. So it's running through the VMS. That's happy. And yep, that's fine. So that's good. That's good. This plugs into there and gives us that which is good so that goes like that the sides go on And there we are. Whew. And there's plenty of room. So when I've fully tested it, I'll put some spaces in here to keep all this in place. But for the moment, um, I'll just keep it where it is. Oh, lovely. Alright, it is completed. I've done a quick five minute uh, discharge and a five minute charge just to verify that the BMS is functioning correctly. Uh, I haven't sealed it or put in all the screws. I want to run it in the car for a week before I um, do that. Uh, but um, this works fine. This is going to bolt onto the wires coming from the car. Uh, I think it's all looking good. So in the next video, we'll put it in and see how it runs in real life. Thanks for watching. Cheers.